Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I'm back again this week to talk about Series 2 of the WWE Retros by Mattel. Yeah, and I can only see one glaring omission from this so-called retro line. I know what you mean, Jess. He had a long and distinguished wrestling career. Oh yeah. Great in the ring as he was on the microphone. Ha <laughs> ha, you're damn right. So great on the mic, in fact, he went on to a second career in the announcer's booth. Ha <laughs> ha, you know who I'm thinking of, Gorilla. Of course, Rowdy Roddy Piper. I mean, he was awesome. And wait a minute, Jess, who are you thinking of? <clears throat> oh yeah, Dusty Rhodes. That would be awesome to get a retro figure of him, considering the Hasbro is so goddamn expensive. God damn it, Gorilla, you know who I mean. Bruno San Martino? No. Macho Man? Oh wait, they made a Macho Man. No. Pat Patterson? No. Oh, I know, Mr. Perfect. No, damn it. Calm down, Jess. I knew who you were talking about all along. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, Hacksaw Jim Duggan! Son of a bitch! Raz Holly, hit the music! <laughs> Okay, so series two, and we've moved on to the Attitude Era, and look what we got here. We've got one of my favorite guys from the Attitude Era, Mick Foley, or Mankind, Cactus Jack, whatever you want to call him. This guy's a bad motherfucker. But let's take a look at his figure here. He's got a very unique pose, and we're going to take a look at it, but first let's take a look at the box. We've got the shitty WWE logo in the corner there, but the box does look very much like the old Hasbro box. Um, it's a little bit more simplified. You can say the same thing about the figures, um, but it does sort of evoke that old school look that, you know, I guess what they were trying to do. And there it is, picture of mankind right there. They've done a pretty good job of sort of matching the exact outfit to the figure. I mean, in this case, this is what he fucking wore all the time, but some of them are a bit more specific and we'll see that as we go on. Now it says down here, authentic superstar moves, mandible claw. I don't know how he pulls that off, but we're gonna find out when we open it up. If you turn around at the back, you've got your collect them all. Shows the whole series two right here. And you've got him um, whacking Kane, whacking him right off of the, of the card. Let's take a look and see what this looks like out of the box. All right, here he is, Mankind. And as you can see, he has the brown pants and the brown boots and the brown knee pads. Um, and to be fair, that's kind of what he looked like in real life. Um, it's very simple. The sculpt is super simple. You've got the tie. You've got his uh, button-down shirt with no buttons. It did have sleeves in real life. Um, they, they've kind of simplified it even more. Um, and now let's get to the action here. His, his pose is reminiscent, I would say, of maybe the Undertaker from the Hasbro figures. Um, I don't have the Undertaker again. Um, he's a little bit expensive to find online. And I used to have him, don't have him anymore. But what I do have is, let's take a look at the Macho King. Macho King has got a similar um, sort of sculpt um, except that the Macho King, his arm is static. It does not move. He does not have a joint here at the shoulder. It looks, if you look closely, it looks like he might have one at the elbow, but then it just stops there at the top. So, no joint 
for the Macho King. Look at that detail. It says Macho King on the ass. Look, the laces. They're painted. They're painted a different color than the boots. I mean, even though this one's got some significant paint damage, and this one did come with some accessories that I don't have. But he had a crown and he had a scepter. This thing's fucking dope. And even though it wasn't painted, take a look at that. They sculpted the tape onto his hands. Now, if you wanted, if you were a, uh, you know, uh, industrious young person like I was back in the day, you could go on and you could paint those and you could make your own custom Macho Man. And that's what I did a bunch of times. And that's why I don't have any of my old figures because I destroyed them with fucking testers paints. But anyway, we're talking about mankind. So let's take a look at some more of the features that we have here. Now, these heads are a little bit better than they were back in the day. They're a little softer. They're not squishy, but they're softer, so you can move them a little bit more. He's got the nice long hair, he's got the mask. The problem is, is that it's so simplified. This brown, this brown, this brown, this brown. It's all the same color brown. Could we have not put the little, you know, symbols on his boots or on something, something on there to kind of make it look like it's got a little bit more texture than it already has. It looks like it's all the same, like it's a piece of fucking chocolate or something. That's it. It's all it is, one color brown throughout the whole thing. And for a character that I really, really like, this figure is way too fucking simple once you've seen the Hasbros. Okay, next up we've got Kane. The man they call Kane, or the Undertaker's brother, or whatever. He's, there he is, he's Kane. Um, he's in his, you know, Attitude Era or debut uh, attire. He looks pretty cool. He, he's got what they call a tombstone. Um, I guess this is the tombstone, which is like a gorilla press slam almost. And the way he is in the box, he's got his arms up. And so they do this. That's the move. That's what he does. I mean, if you want to, you could move it down a little bit and make it a little bit more realistic i guess but looks like he might does not have a joint at the waist no joint at the waist even though there's a line there he does not have a joint at that waist um i feel like i'm gonna break him if i try that so um the mask is pretty cool looking all in all like he's a pretty sick looking figure as far as the head is concerned this head sculpt is pretty cool it's you know cartoonish but, I mean, I guess that's what they were going for. My main problem with these figures, and it has been, is that we are reusing the sculpts on the arms, on the torso. Now, they've done a little extra stuff here with this costume and with this, you know, with the glove. Well, I mean, not really, but they've, they've sculpted on a little bit of the, the, you know, the edge of the glove there. But the hands are the same. The arm is the same, it's the same as John Cena, it's the same as the Ultimate Warrior figure. I mean, come on. I know, I know, Mattel, you don't, you know, there's not a lot of money to go around these days, and, you know, being a small, independent toy maker like yourselves, it, it can be tough trying to, you know, to, to do this WWE license right. But anyway, that's bullshit. You've got the money. Fucking make these figures better. The people that are buying these things deserve better figures, especially for the $12.99 or whatever the fuck they cost at retail. These things are should be way better. And this this figure is okay, but like honestly, would you have paid over $10 for this figure? Well, a lot of people did. And here we have him. Do you smell what The Rock is cooking? Well, here he is with another press slam move. I'm sure they call The Rock Bottom or something. Here's The Rock. Oh, look. Oh, my God. He's got waist articulation. Wow. Wow. Amazing, Mattel. Amazing. But, you know, to be fair, let's take a look at the figure, okay? Let's be fair about it. He's got his tattoo. There you go. He's true to the era. This is what he looked like. He's got the, you know, the eyebrow working. It does look like The Rock. You know who it's supposed to be. But I gotta think that if there was a figure back in the day of The Rock that was made by Hasbro, 
it would look better. And I'm sure there's customs out there that'll prove that point. I'm sure there are customs that look better than this figure. Now with this figure, you can really tell the articulation on the head is so much better in these new ones. So I will be fair and I'll say, you know what? This head articulation is pretty cool. You can get a nice tilt going on there. So you can get some cool looking poses and stuff. He does have the Brahma bull, the gold bull on his ass. Um, he has his little cutout boots where his calves stick out. Um, you know, it, it is trying to be authentic, but I think they went too simple in some aspects and too realistic in other aspects. I'm surprised you were able to find all of these, Gorilla. Aren't they extremely, extremely rare? rare? Anyway, they can be hard to find out in the wild, thanks to scalper assholes who think they're running a business by buying up a bunch of shit that's popular at retail and then gouging the fuck out of people that really want it on the back end. I disagree. And here we have him. It's the game. Well, pre-game, Triple H. Swimmer's physique, Triple H. Hunter Hearst Helmsley, if you will. In the purple tights. And there he is. And he's, you know, he's got the, you know, this look on his face. There you go. He's got a smug, fucking stupid look on his face. Um, his wrist tape is painted. He's got really short arms. I'm sure this jumping move that he does is called the pedigree. Um, so let's take a look. It's the jumping move. Well remembered, if you remember this guy, the ultimate warrior. Wow, look at the difference here. Take a look at the difference in the physique sculpts, in the arm sculpts. How much, like, 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 this is just a mirror of the other side. Like, come on, you cheap bastards. If you look at this Ultimate Warrior figure, his fucking thumbnail is sculpted. The little lines on his fingers are sculpted. It's the little knuckles. It's all very high detail. These figures at retail, even if you factor in inflation, were selling for less money than these figures were. And let's take a look at the action. Ultimate Warrior, you got the neck kind of popping out, looks really stupid, and he jumps. Okay, and let's take a look at Triple H. There has been an improvement. His neck does not pop out, and he jumps pretty well. Um, you know, to be fair, let's look at the Ultimate Warrior and see. You know, he does okay. But this figure's old. This is from 1990, damn it. But this figure is from 2017, I believe. I think, yes, 2017. This is when these came out. And, yeah, come on, man. Like, they can, they're not bad. They're not, I don't want, don't get me wrong. I don't hate these figures. I might sound like I do, but I don't hate these figures. They're good figures, but when you take a look at the Hasbro figures and the detail and the love that went into these goddamn things, you've got to know they could have done a better job. They could have done a better job. There's more technology. They're supposed to be smarter people. They're supposed to be a better company at this point in time. Mattel, in 2017, should be better than Hasbro in 1990. Should they not? True or false? I don't know. But anyway, that's Triple H, and, and he's okay. And there he is, the man from WCW. We have one WCW guy from this Attitude Era, even though on the box they've got a picture of Old Man Sting. This is Sting from probably 97-ish era from the comeback. Um, and to be fair, you know what? He wasn't this buff. He looked like shit when he came back. And that's why, you know, a lot of things went wrong in WCW. And Sting maybe been able to come back in, in some kind of shape. He wouldn't have looked like shit. And maybe Hogan would have, you know, put him over better or something. Uh, but I digress. Let's, let's not talk about the old days. Let's not talk about old dead companies. Let's talk about this stupid figure. Look, look, oh my God. The innovation. He does a jump move. Oh my God. Let's bring him out. Let's bring up the Ultimate Warrior. 
and let's compare. Let's compare because it's just not fair to compare them to the Hasbro's, Dan. Fuck you. It is fair. These figures are almost 30 years old, goddammit. And this figure is brand new. Brand new. Just came out. This thing, this thing can vote. This thing can rent a car. This thing is a fucking old man compared to this fucking thing. And, and strangely, Sting's got rubber feet. Did Triple H have rubber feet? Hold on. So, as it turns out, Triple H has got rubber feet too. I don't know why. Uh, maybe maybe the, the mechanism is going down into the feet. And that's how they they make them, make them bounce. Piece of shit. There you go. He's, he's gonna jump. Oh, he's staying. That's just what he does. Now, I'm sure... Now, I'm sure that jumping move is, is called the Stinger Splash, and that's the one that actually works, because that's kind of what that move looks like, honestly. It is a jump move. So, so there's, there's points there. The, the face sculpt looks cool. The hair looks cool. I mean, it is a cool-looking figure. He'll look nice on a shelf. If you're a Sting fan, then you'll dig it. It's a cool figure, you know? He's got the scorpion there, but, like, not much else. Nothing with the flak jacket. Nothing with uh, really any difference. No, nothing on the tights. Just all black. No laces, even on the boots. So, you know, another, another sort of simple figure from Mattel. Okay, and finally we have Stone Cold Steve Austin, the centerpiece of the Attitude Era, and the centerpiece of this line right here, or this series at least. And there he is, and he kind of looks like Stone Cold. Um, as you can see, he has no eyebrows, um, unlike the real Steve Austin, who is blonde, and yeah, sometimes it can be hard to see his eyebrows, but they're there. They exist. <laughs> but what's cool about this, actually, is he's got this uh, this rubber sort of, um, it's an extra piece. I, I can't come off or anything like that, but his, his knee brace. And that's really cool. So he's got this knee brace. He's got, you know, his, um, his wrist tape, which isn't molded on. It's just painted on. He's got the same arms as uh, whoever the fuck else has this motion in the line. And there he is, the Stone Cold Stunner, just like everybody remembers, right? It's a big clothesline. <sighs> Man. And you know what? I want to like these figures, and I don't hate them, but man, they could have done so much of a better job with these things. And for, you know, Stone Cold, one of my favorite guys of all time, and I and mean, I guess this is a cool figure, but I mean, look at him. They made him look kind of like, he's like, nah, I'm Stone Cold, nah, like some sort of, I don't know. The point is, they could have done a better job, and I wish they would have, honestly. If they pushed a little bit more, just a little bit more effort into these, they could have been something really special. Instead, they're just, you know, they're made to be in the box, you know, and, and they're made to be, you know, displayed on a wall or whatever for all these, you know, booger-eating collectors out there that don't open their toys. But, you know, there was a time back in the day when they made these things to play with and they made these things with a little bit more heart and a little bit more passion. And I wish, I wish they would have, you know, shown that same respect to this line. Being is that the Hasbros were my favorite toy line, not just wrestling figures, but toy line of all time. And yeah, truthfully, yes, they had a lot to live up to nostalgia-wise, but quality-wise, we've seen them. Today, we've seen those figures lined up next to these figures. And these, they just don't add up. All right, that's it for this week. We'll be back again next time for Series 3 of the WWE Retros by Mattel. Hey, you've got Series 3 too? Sure, I've got them all so far. That's not possible. Those are, Those extremely, are extremely rare, rare figures. figures.
anyway, we'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show. Raz Holly, hit the music!